Hey, sellers, welcome back to another initial recce. This one's going to be dealing with the Lone Connect Publishing Canadians in Italy. Uh, this is the second pack. Uh, scenario number 13, Sterling Castle. It takes place 8 December 1943 around San Leonardo, Italy, uh, up along the East Coast. This is around the vicinity of Ortona. So this is one of the preparatory actions the uh, Canadians were involved in, paving the way for the later Ortona action. They had to secure the uh, western flank of that, and this is one of those actions. So this deals with the Morro River, represented by that flooded stream on the map that you can see. Um, notoriously difficult to cross. There's a lot of uh, river valleys that cr bisected the terrain from west to east, and the Canadians were trying to push north and uh, so they kept running into these uh, river ravines that they had to come across. So um, with the uh, winter melts and the rain and all the rest of that stuff, it proved very, uh, very much an obstacle along the way. Uh, Dave and I like this scenario because it involves the A Company of the Royal Canadian Regiment, a regiment that Dave and I both served in uh, many years ago. Um, so the action revolves around a single building. Uh, Sterling Castle, as I called it, that was manned by a Lieutenant Sterling and his platoon. And uh, they were able to withstand a concerted uh, German counterattacks, trying to push the Canadians south of the river again. Uh, it was a multi-day ca mini campaign, if you will, for to get across the river, establish footholds across the Mar River so that they could continue to push forth. And this is one of those actions. Um, platoon held on for uh, a good day and uh, finally able to retreat under cover the darkness to uh, to safety on the south side of the river after the rest of the forces around them had been uh, pushed back as well. So the, the, the foothold on the far side of the Moro had basically collapsed. Um, yeah, but uh, it was a, it's a battle honor on the Royal Canadian Regiment uh, honor roll. So it's uh, one of those history things that Dave and I like because it ties in very much with something that we were part of. So that's why we're that's why we like like to play this one. The other reason why is because it's a small unit action. So you already saw in the order of battle. You're basically looking at three British Canadian squads with two leaders facing off against five and a half German squads. Uh, it's only four and a half turns. So again, a very small uh, scenario that we're going to be giving it a couple of goes to see uh, what we can make of it. Um, so let's start off with the uh, the board configuration. So this only deals with less than a half of board 50 from uh, hex rows V to GG. So it's a very small uh, playing area, which is again another reason why we like it. It's one of those uh, between big games kind of scenario that you can throw in just to uh, change a pace. And this is fits the bill perfectly. Um, so as I said, four and a half turns. The Germans move last, so that's going to impact the way the Canadians act, especially in the last half of the game. And the victory conditions are basically the Germans have to break or rout or engage in melee any uh, Canadian MMCs that are within one hex of Y6, represented by that yellow V, uh, basically the red area. If there's any good order MMCs in that area, the Germans lose and the Canadians win. So. German objective is to destroy those three squads or engage them in melee because if you're melee, you're not in good order. The Canadians, for their part, can set up on the board within that green area that you see on the map. Um, they can also set up entrenched according to one of the SSRs. So if you're in appro appropriate terrain, basically not a building, you can entrench if you will. Uh, Dave brought up a good point as we're discussing this scenario that. Um, there's a psychological aspect to sitting in a trench or a foxhole. Because of the superior protection, you may decide to stay and fight rather than wisely pull back. The Canadians only have three squads, as I said, and you can't really afford to lose more than a half squad worth initially. So you have to be cognizant of that fact and be willing to pull back. And if you're stuck in a foxhole, maybe mentally you're thinking you're safer to stay there rather than retreat because the Germans have a lot of firepower. So the German order battle again, five squads and a, and a half squad as well, as well as two LMGs and a medium. Coupled with a Neg-1 leader, you can easily get 16 firepower bearing down the Canadians and they can just not withstand that kind of firepower. They don't have the uh, um, 
ability to take any serious casualties. Um, ELRs are both four, and the Germans have a SAN of two, and the Canadians have a SAN of four. Um, only two SSRs to worry about. The first one is uh, weather is overcast, ECR wet, and there's no wind at start. So overcast conditions mean that if you roll in 10, 11, or 12 on the wind change die roll, that's rain starting. Rain starting means it costs an extra plus one to go uphill. And if you look at the map, Sterling Castle is sitting on a level two hill. There's a lot of wooded hills uh, to good negotiate as well, which basically means if you get rain starting, the uh, Germans have that much more difficulty getting up the hill. Um, yeah, so it's something to bear in mind and to definitely consider. Um, <clears throat> there's really not a lot to talk about in this scenario just because it's it's so small. Uh, it's quite simple. The Germans start off board, the Canadians start on board and concealed. The Canadians are augmented by four dummy stack, four units you can set up as two dummy stacks because the uh, uh, Germans are off board, all the Canadian order battle can start concealed. So those four suspect counters are actually, you know, for dummy counters. Uh, so don't don't use a mistake need to cover your troops. That's just a waste of resources. Uh, you do have an LMG and a Piat as well, which might come in handy if the uh, Germans get into one of those two houses and you want to do some kind of quick counterattack. Um, you need a hard target to hit with a Piat. And uh, <clears throat> so something to bear in mind. Um, in terms of tactics, look from, from the Canadian perspective as a defender, uh, there's a couple of key areas, building X6 and Z6. These are definitely key terrain. If you can hold on to these or be able to fight in these, preferably concealed, even if you engaged in melee, being concealed, you're likely to get ambush. Germans probably going to be CX coming up these wooded hills, again, depending how long he takes. And as long as you have this road covered so he can't just waltz up the road up the hill, he's going to be paying this extra cost. And uh, if he's CX'd in combat and you're C uh, concealed, that's a neg three in your ambush die roll. So a uh, good die roll means you're probably going to gain ambush. And with any luck, you'll be able to kill the uh, German before it gets too involved. So good luck with that. <clears throat> um, Again, that argument about the setup entrenched or not, you can maybe set up a bunch of foxholes in AA4 through 6, and with the express purpose of slowing down the Canadians or the Germans from just coming down the road. But eventually, you're going to have to retreat from these positions into this red area so you can roll off the ground again. You've only got three squads, and at least one of those has to be a good order within this red area for you to pull off a win. Uh, Germans, for their part, uh, they have a couple of choices. Um, they can come in from the west, which obviously is so much open ground, it would be ludicrous. Too many neg two shots. They could come in from the uh, uh, east. This river or stream is flooded, so they won't be able to ford it. But um, they can still squeak through if you want. It might take a little bit longer and come into the place from the uh, from the south. But again, you got wooded hills. Uh, so difficult to advance up this kind of terrain, but it is an option the Germans have. Or the way I'm going to do it is basically come through the center. So I'm going to use a couple of half squads and try and bust some concealment. Basically going to CX some charge down the road, try and get into these hexes and see what's there. They're probably going to die, but that's the purpose. They're going to be scouts, <clears throat> excuse me, cardboard warriors that you can use to uh, uh, remove concealment and uh, figure out what's there and maybe maybe it's even a dummy stack where they survive fire and they're that much closer to your objective and then I've got to have two other stacks with my leaders uh, they'll be moving through the woods probably end up in this area here somewhere ready to advance onto the hill by the uh, by the turn two I may decide to come up this way be just because this open hex means I'm only paying two to go uphill and not four. And again, if overcast conditions turn into rain, you're looking at five to go uphill. It's very easy to become CX very quickly. And again, you don't want to go into close combat when you're CX if you can avoid it. Shooting is bad enough, but close combat, it, it could be the death of you, literally. Um, but yeah, the tactic-wise, there's really not a lot of choices. Again, Canadians set up within the green. Germans come off from on board. I'm going to choose to come on to the center, regardless of really how Dave sets up. Uh, I could see him setting up forward, 
and then falling back, given what he was saying about entrenchments, I could see him doing that. But yeah, without further ado, let's get uh, into the gameplay. So we're going to play this, uh, like I said, at least twice, maybe even a third time. Uh, those videos should be coming up probably the next day or two. And uh, yeah, we're ready to kick off on this first scenario. I'm not sure when we're going to get to it. But as I said, in the next day or two, we'll probably uh, be playing this game. And uh, we'll see you guys in those videos. Bye-bye. 